Welcome to a new episode of the podcast. Vox Agent is made by AI for business executives that work with AI. Today, we're diving deep into something Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, calls the next frontier in AI agent swarms. Our goal is to cut through the complexity and give you a shortcut understanding of this transformative technology. Think of it as getting well-informed on the latest in AI, with surprising facts and just enough humor to keep you hooked so you can leverage this knowledge quickly and thoroughly without feeling overwhelmed. And uh, it's important to stress this isn't just some far-off sci-fi idea. <laughs> Not at all. Major organizations are already exploring it. I mean, a recent survey found a 29% of companies are actually using agentic AI right now. 29%? Wow, that's higher than I might have guessed. It is moving fast. And <laughs> the market for AI agents, it's projected to blow past $10 billion by 2025. So this really promises advantages in efficiency, robustness, scalability, stuff that goes way beyond what single AI systems can offer. That's why it's so key for executives to get a handle on it. Okay, let's unpack this then. What exactly are AI agent swarms? Can we break that down? At its heart, it's basically a group of autonomous AI agents, right? All working together. Exactly. Coordinated, but also decentralized. They're working towards shared goals. And the key is that each agent is often specialized for certain tasks. They communicate, they collaborate to tackle these really complex, multifaceted problems. Okay, so maybe an analogy helps, like um, a really efficient restaurant kitchen. You yeah. got one chef prepping, another cooking, others doing salads, all coordinated, but focused on their part. That's a great analogy, yeah. Everyone has their role, they communicate, maybe pass things along. The goal is the same, get the meal out perfectly. It solves problems faster, potentially with fewer errors than one person juggling everything. Makes sense. And what's really fascinating, I think, is where the idea comes from. It's heavily inspired by nature. Like ants. I think I read something about that. Precisely. Like ant colonies finding the shortest path to food, or bees deciding together on a new nest site. There's no central leader barking orders. It's decentralized intelligence emerging from local interactions. Wow. And this really echoes back to Marvin Minsky's Society of Mind theory from uh, 1986. He theorized intelligence emerging from many simple agents interacting. It's pretty much what we're seeing manifest now with multi-agent AI. So it's got deep roots, conceptually. Definitely. And just to clarify some terms, an AI agent swarm is a bit different from just a general multi-agent system or agentic AI. Swarms usually imply that decentralized control and self-organization through local interactions. Think bottom-up intelligence, not necessarily a top-down orchestrated workflow. Okay, so less of a conductor, more of a jam session. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Each agent is autonomous, makes its own decisions, its reactive responds to its environment, and its proactive takes initiative towards its goals. Right. Okay, here's where it gets really interesting for me. Why now? Why the sudden surge? You said 29% are already using it. Yeah, it's a confluence of factors, really. A perfect storm, you could say. Mm -hmm. On the technology side, you've got powerful cloud computing everywhere, the Internet of Things connecting everything, you know, generating data. Right, the infrastructure's there. Exactly. Plus, much more advanced algorithms like multi-agent reinforcement learning, where AIs learn together by trial and error. And frankly, the underlying large language models, the LLMs powering these agents, are just incredibly capable now. And the business drivers. Well, businesses are facing just immense complexity, right? Mm -hmm. Dynamic conditions, volatile supply chains, customers wanting hyper-personalization. Things single AI struggle with alone. Precisely. Mm. Monolithic single AI solutions just can't keep up with that dynamism. Swarms offer a more modular, flexible approach. You break down complex problems, solve pieces in parallel. Which brings us back to Nadella's point about digital coworkers. Yeah, his vision is that these swarms will integrate deeply into daily operations, not necessarily replacing people wholesale, but augmenting them, creating this hybrid human AI workforce. Okay, so we understand the what's and the why now. Let's get into the how. How do these swarms actually work? Mm. Under the hood, yeah. you said it's not one giant brain, it's distributed. It's the core idea. It's an ecosystem. Think of it involving the agents themselves, their environment, which could be digital like databases or physical like a factory floor and the communication infrastructure connecting them. So what are the key parts of that ecosystem? All right, let's break down the essentials. First, you need some kind of multi-agent organization. How are the agents structured? Is it flat like a team? hierarchical with manager agents. Modern frameworks let you mix and match. Okay, how they team up. Then agent to agent communication. This needs to be robust. Think messaging systems, oh. APIs, and crucially, they often need to agree on things as consensus. Agree, like vote. 
Sort of. They use algorithms, like one called Raft, to ensure they all have a consistent view of shared information. You don't want agents working off contradictory data, right? Makes sense. Mm. Avoids chaos. Exactly. Then there's coordination and task allocation. How does work get divided? Maybe a dedicated task manager agent, or maybe it's more like a market where agents bid for tasks they're suited for. Smooth handoffs between agents are critical here. Like passing the baton in a relay race. Good one, yeah. Then they need shared memory and knowledge, a common place to store info they all need access to. Could be a distributed database or something called a blackboard architecture where agents post findings for others to see. A central knowledge hub. Kinda, yeah, but often distributed itself. Then you've got the practical stuff. Agent lifecycle management, how do you start them, monitor them, stop them. Think of it like HR and IT for your AI team. Containerization is big here, packaging agents, so they're easy to deploy and scale. And observability tools to see what they're doing. Right, like swarms.ai provides. Yeah. Hugely important. Security and access control. Each agent is potentially an entry point, so you need tight permissions, encryption, maybe zero trust principles. Some are even looking at blockchain for secure, tamper-proof logs of agent interactions. Wow, blockchain too. Okay. Yeah, for certain high trust scenarios. Yeah. And finally, the environment interface. How do the agents actually connect to the outside world? Through APIs, to databases, web services, or interfaces to physical sensors and actuators? That sounds incredibly complex to build from scratch. Yeah. But I guess the good news for leaders is you don't always have to. Frameworks help. Exactly. That's the key takeaway. Frameworks like Microsoft's Autogen or platforms like Swarms.ai, they abstract away a lot of that underlying complexity. So developers can focus more on the agent's logic, what it needs to achieve, rather than wrestling with low-level networking or consensus protocols. It lets you build the intelligence faster. Like having the plumbing taken care of so you can design the house. Perfect analogy. And all that architecture enables some really powerful capability. Okay, let's talk capabilities. What do swarms do uniquely well? Well, first off, distributed problem solving. They excel at breaking down massive problems into smaller chunks that can be tackled in parallel. Many hands or many agents make light work. Divide and conquer. Precisely. Second, specialization and heterogeneity. You create a team of experts. Each agent is optimized for its niche task. Chi Wang at Microsoft Research highlighted this specialization leads to faster, more accurate results overall. So better outcomes because everyone plays to their strengths. Exactly. Then there's collaboration and emergent intelligence. This is really fascinating. Sometimes the best solutions or insights arise because of the interaction between agents. They share results, critique each other's work. You can literally have critic agents leading to more robust decisions. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So intelligence actually emerges from the swarm itself. That's the idea, yeah. Also, dynamic adaptation. Swarms can adjust on the fly to changing conditions. New data comes in, priorities shift. The swarm can often reconfigure itself without human intervention. Think disaster response. Of adapting in real time. Right. And very importantly, fault tolerance and robustness. Because it's decentralized, there's usually no single point of failure. If one agent crashes or makes a mistake, others can often compensate or take over its task. Like that Akata warehouse example. Exactly. Their robots operate as a swarm. If one robot breaks down, another can step in. The whole system keeps running smoothly. It adds massive resilience. Okay. And finally, real-time parallelism. Lots of things happening at once. For large-scale problems, this means you can get near real-time responsiveness that a single sequential system just couldn't manage. Faster insights, faster right. actions. Definitely. Okay, so we've got the how and the what they can do. Where are we actually seeing these swarms applied today? How mature is this, really? You mentioned frameworks like Autogen, Langgraph, Swarms.ai, so people are building with these. Oh, absolutely. It's still, I'd say, early to mid-stage maturity overall, but the progress is rapid. We saw those early viral demos like AutoGPT, which maybe got people excited even if they were a bit brittle back then. Now we have more robust tools. Right. And the market trends back this up. That projected growth from $5.4 billion this year to potentially $47 billion by 2030 is huge. And remember that 29% adoption rate? It's moving from labs into actual business applications. But there are still hurdles, right? You mentioned consistency. For sure. Managing consistency across all agents, making sure they don't collectively drift off course, uh, debugging emergent behavior that you didn't explicitly program, these are real challenges. It often means human oversight, maybe a human in the loop to validate key decisions. It's still pretty common and frankly sensible right now. It's a learning process for organizations.
Okay, so it's not fully autonomous everywhere yet, but the potential is driving adoption. So what does this mean for you, the listener, the executive? Let's hit some concrete use cases. Yeah, let's make it tangible. In software development, we're seeing collaborative coding, faster prototyping. Imagine agents monitoring your app's performance overnight and suggesting fixes, or even writing the code patches. Huge productivity boost potential there. And in marketing, things like autonomous campaign management, mm -hmm. optimizing ad bids in real time based on conversions. There was a case study of an e-commerce firm boosting ROI significantly using a swarm for pay-per-click ads. Adapting faster than any human team could. Right. Then supply chain and logistics optimizing inventory, forecasting demand, especially with all the recent volatility. Walmart's experimented with this. Amazon and DHL use similar ideas for road optimization. Critical for efficiency and resilience in supply chains? Financial services, that seems like a natural fit. Algorithmic trading, using multiple agents to analyze different market signals for more robust strategies. Also, fraud detection, combining detectors to catch more with fewer false alarms. Higher accuracy is key there. And customer service. Handling inquiries autonomously, even proactive support, like an online seller's swarm contacting a customer about a delay before they even complain. Turning a negative into a potentially positive interaction. Exactly. And you see it bubbling up elsewhere too, right? Healthcare, energy grids, smart cities. Yeah, patient monitoring, balancing energy supply and demand, managing city traffic flow. The, the applications are really broad once you start thinking about complex, dynamic systems. So connecting this to the bigger enterprise picture, mm -hmm. what's the strategic implication? Fundamentally, AI swarms are a tool to reshape core business processes. They enable much deeper intelligent automation moving towards what some call the autonomous enterprise. It drives productivity, obviously, but also innovation. That IBM stat is telling 62% of supply chain leaders see agentic AI as a critical accelerator for speed. So focusing on the C-suite perspective, what are the main benefits they should be looking at? Okay, key benefits. First, efficiency and cost reduction. Automating complex, multi-step workflows saves serious money. Gartner's prediction about automating 80% of customer service issues, cutting costs by 30%, that's huge. Look at Ocado processing 65,000 orders a week. Read your cost savings. Second, speed and agility. Responding to market shifts or disruptions almost instantly shortens innovation cycles dramatically. Busy out of the curve. Third, quality and accuracy. Swarms can often achieve higher precision and consistency than humans at scale, leading to better outcomes, higher customer satisfaction. Fewer errors, better results. Fourth, innovation in new capabilities. They can uncover hidden insights by processing vast data in parallel or run loads of experiments simultaneously, like a media company testing hundreds of content variations with AI agents. Finding what works faster. And fifth, resilience and risk management. That lack of a single point of failure, the ability for comprehensive monitoring, it makes systems more robust better at mitigating risks proactively. Built-in backup and oversight. Makes sense, mm -hmm. but it can't all be smooth sailing. What are the big adoption challenges enterprises are hitting? <laughs> no, definitely challenges. The initial investment can be significant and figuring out the ROI isn't always straightforward up front. It requires careful planning and pilot projects. Proving the value takes time. Right, then there's change management and workforce impact. This is a big one. Roles will change. People worry about displacement. That PwC finding about AI exposed skills changing twice as fast is sobering. It is. The key is framing it as augmentation collaboration, but that requires serious investment in reskilling and managing the human side of the transition. Preparing people for their new digital colleagues. Exactly. Then trust and transparency. How do you govern these things? Who's accountable if a swarm makes a mistake? You need clear frameworks, maybe human sign-offs for critical decisions, and ways to understand why the swarm did what it did explainability. The black box problem potentially amplified. It can be, yeah. And finally, just basic alignment with business goals, ensuring these projects aren't just cool tech experiments, but actually solve real business problems and deliver measurable value, needs clear strategic direction. So looking ahead, say, the next three, five years, What's the trajectory? What new capabilities or trends should we expect? It's going to evolve fast. Expect more advanced reasoning and autonomy, better planning, long-term memory for agents, more common sense reasoning, maybe even multi-agent debate capabilities agents arguing out the best solution. A digital think tank. 
Kind of. Also, more multimodal and cross-domain collaboration. Agents that understand not just text, but images, video, sensor data from IoT devices, maybe even control physical systems more directly. Think integrated smart factories or environmental monitoring. Connecting digital and physical worlds more seamlessly. And deeper integration of learning. Mm. Deep reinforcement learning, federated learning, letting swarms continuously learn and improve from experience collectively. Any specific emerging trends catching your eye? A few big ones. Swarm intelligence combined with blockchain is fascinating. Creating decentralized networks where agents from different organizations could potentially collaborate securely with trust insured by the blockchain. Wow, cross-company swarms. Potentially. Then edge and IoT swarms. Agents running right on devices, drones, machines, forming local swarms that can act fast and autonomously, then sync back with the cloud. Intelligence moving out to the edge. Exactly. We'll also need much better human swarm collaboration interfaces. Tools to visualize what the swarm is doing, interact with it using natural language, maybe even have humans participate as peer agents within the swarm. Making collaboration truly intuitive. And finally, more industry-specific swarm solutions. Pre-built agent libraries and templates tailored for healthcare, finance, manufacturing, lowering the barrier for companies in those sectors to get started. So this really could lead to some fundamental shifts, some real disruption. Absolutely. The idea of the autonomous enterprise, where swarms handle a lot of the day-to-day -day operations with humans focusing more on strategy, ethics, creativity, that feels profound. It is, and it implies new roles will emerge. Swarm supervisor, maybe, or AI behavior designer shaping how these agent teams interact. Nadella's vision of humans working with swarms as colleagues feels increasingly plausible. But it also brings up serious ethical questions, right? Transparency, accountability, potential misuse. Huge questions. We need robust governance. The potential for good tackling climate change, complex diseases is immense. But the risks are real too, if not managed thoughtfully. It's a powerful technology. A pivotal leap, as you said. I think so. AI agent swarms offer real gains in efficiency, adaptability, innovation. They deliver tangible strategic value. The challenge is coordination, security, integration. They're significant, but solvable with careful design and oversight. So for executives listening, what are the key strategic recommendations? How should they approach this? Okay, boil it down. First, educate and evangelize. Understand the tech, champion its potential within your organization. Get everyone on board. Second, identify high impact use cases. Where can Swarm solve your most complex problems or provide the biggest speed advantage? Focus there. Start smart. Third, launch pilot projects. Start small, measure clearly, involve different departments, build momentum and learn. Prove it out. Fourth, invest in talent and skills. Hire experts, yes, but crucially, reskill your current workforce for this new era of collaboration. Prepare your risk and compliance teams too. People are key. Fifth, establish governance and ethics frameworks early. Don't wait. Address accountability, data privacy, fairness, transparency from the beginning. Set the guardrails. Sixth, develop your technology strategy, build, buy, partner, figure out the right approach for your capabilities and goals. Make a plan. And finally, seventh, prepare for change management. Communicate the why, provide training, manage expectations. This impacts culture, not just tech. Manage the human element proactively. This raises an important question for you, our listener. As AI agents increasingly mirror human teamwork and specialization, how will your organization adapt to truly integrate these digital colleagues, not just as tools, but as an intra part of your collective intelligence? What new forms of human AI collaboration will you lead? Thank you for joining the podcast and see you soon.